please welcome our next speaker, Mark Hansen, presenting The Welcoming Gospel, the argument that hospitality is an essential Christian practice. Hospitality is an essential Christian practice often taken for granted. It seems natural for us to commune with friends, invite them for fellowship, and go to their house. But once a true need arises, then we, then we see like, how essential hospitality is. Imagine someone at school who is weird and often alone. You talk to them sometimes, but not often. One day, they come to you, looking nervous and restless. They share they had a fight with their parents and are now on bad terms with them, in need of a place to stay. You're the one who knows them best at school. Admittedly, not well. After some quick consideration, you invite them to your home. Hospitality offers a source of love to those who are hurting, those who are strange, those who are alone. But we have forgotten the true significance of this practice. The first Christians devoted themselves to hospitality, revealing its foundational importance. Acts 2.45 says, they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. This practice began immediately after Peter delivered his first sermon after Jesus ascended. The new believer's response included hospitality along with other essential practices such as communion and prayer. Hospitality used to be an honorable practice a practice that brought people together. In American culture, this practice has lost its value. With inventions like the car, cell phone, and communication over the internet, it makes talking with people all too convenient. Visiting a person across town has lost its meaning. Due to this, hospitality is taken for granted. Everything that used to make hospitality special is now reduced to going through the motions. We fail to realize that there are people who do not experience hospitality as a regular part of their day. People who are homeless, people who are hurting, people who are alone, people who are different. It is essential for all Christians to practice hospitality, as it is a major part of evangelism and fellowship. God values everyone else just as much as he values you. After all, God created mankind in his own image. But with this idea of reaching out, come our doubts. Many of us see the person who is alone and think, Someone else would go reach out to them, hopefully, failing to, to seek them out ourselves. Or we get nervous around, some, around someone we don't know, making us uncomfortable. But a relationship with God requires taking risks. Jesus instructs us to take up his cross daily and follow him. Does extending genuine hospitality not apply? Those who show love to the least of these are blessed by God. Every human being was created by God for eternity and redeemed by Christ. Therefore, every person is due fundamental respect regardless of her or his condition or position in the world. In addition, Every person, despite religious profession or lifestyle, deserved the care prompted by Jesus' identification with the least of these. So everyone, Christian or non-Christian, rich or poor, neurotypical or neurodiverse, 
Abled or disabled, all deserve hospitality, for all are created by God. According to Christine Paul, giving a stranger her full attention communicates that he or she is interesting and worthwhile. We pay attention to the people we value. Hospitality makes people feel valued. Hospitality is welcoming someone into our heart and making them feel like the most important person in the room, even if they feel worthless. Christ's example is worthy of careful consideration and constant practice. Now, one may say, I know hospitality is good, but Christians are not required to do it. The response to this thinking is found in James 4.16. If anyone, then, knows the good they ought to do, but doesn't do it, it is sin for them. So if one knows hospitality is good and fails to seek to practice it, they are sinning. Hospitality has been around for thousands of years, and yet we have forgotten the power and significance of this practice often taught by Jesus as a way to show his love and expand his kingdom, it is essential to evangelism. Many people are compelled by its practice. However, its value never changed. We only forgot how much it is worth. This world would be a better place if everyone loved one another and valued one another like family, is that not something we want? This practice has the potential to spread the gospel around the globe. That is not to say that everyone will instantly cry, praise the Lord. However, it would put us on the road to expanding God's kingdom, showing everyone his love through hospitality. Christians should be more than just those who have a faith, but are also ones in a relationship with Jesus, the author of love. This relationship is shown to others by means of hospitality. This world will be changed when Christians resolve to make life, help, hope, peace, joy, truth, and love more accessible. As Christians, we should desire what God desires. God desires for lost people to be found. So Christians must find the lost, and we are commanded to do so. After all, we were lost first. As soon as sin entered the world, we were separated from God. Through the sacrifice of his son, God found us and started transforming us through our relationship with him. Hospitality is our gift to give, to ensure that those who are lost will not remain that way. So we must show everyone, Christian or non-Christian, rich or poor, neurotypical or neurodiverse, abled or disabled, all deserve the hospitality that Christ showed us, that we show to our own family, because we are all a part of God's family. Thank you.